Hi, this is Kyle Lee, Senior Construction Solutions Specialist with ATG USA. We're back for another technical talk video in our series, providing a high level overview of the tools available in the Autodesk build module. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the forms area in Autodesk build. And within Autodesk build forms are um, are where we're going to be able to manage, uh, create, and complete different checklists or punch lists for our projects. So to get started, if you haven't already done so, log into the Autodesk Construction Cloud website and select the appropriate build project that we're going to be working with. And then once you're in your build project and on the home screen like I am here, we're going to go into the forms section. So as we get started on a new project, it's important whenever we come into the form section to first come to the templates tab, because the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have our different templates um, set up or established for our teams to use out in the field with uh, checklists and punch lists. And there are a couple of different ways that we can get our templates set up. OK, so we're not going to walk through the actual creation process of all the different ways that we can do it, but we are going to take a look at the different ways that we can get new templates set up. Um, the first way that we can do it is by hitting the create button here. We're going to say we want to create a template. And so we have two options. These are two options for getting uh, checklist templates in place for your build project. The first is to build a new form from scratch. The second is we could also upload an existing PDF form. So the Autodesk build platform is built to support smart PDFs. And so if your team has smart PDFs that you may have utilized in the past for checklists or punch lists, you can easily upload those forms directly into the forms area and then start to use those as your template on your project. The other way that we can um, import form templates into our project is with our import button here. OK, and so right here, it tells us that we can um, look at other Autodesk build projects and bring over templates, form templates from those projects that we've been invited into. And so what that looks like is we would just say next and then we would potentially select the um, the project that we would like to bring the form templates in from and then select the individual form templates. So if I were to select this project, now I can see the different templates that would be available for me to bring over into my new project. Okay, so again, there were three different ways that we could essentially import our templates. Um, the first was to build a new template. The second was to, um, was to import a smart PDF or to upload a smart PDF using the create button here and the final method was to use the import and actually bring in a template from another build project that you have access to. OK, so once we have our template here in um, our forms area, the first thing that we might need to do is just select that template and say that we want to edit it. OK, now if we need to modify the template in any way, possibly make changes to any of the questions that are on the, the form itself, we can do that by selecting modify template right here. The other thing that we can do here, and what's most important, is we'll want to make sure that we can set up our contributors. We have three different levels of participants in the forms process here. We have contributors. Those are the people that can actually complete and submit the checklist or punch list forms. We have reviewers. Those are the individuals that have the ability to go in and, and view any of the submitted forms. And then we have managers. And the managers are the only ones that um, they can only edit your template settings. OK, so the first thing we want to make sure of is to, that we've got the individuals on the project named as contributors that are going to actually be completing these templates out into the field. Also, from the reviewer standpoint, if you check mark this box right here, it will allow viewers to the reviewers to see and be able to view 
any of the forms that are still in draft status before they may have been submitted. OK, so in this case, we don't need to make any changes to our contributors, our reviewers or our managers. So I can just cancel that for right now. But I did want to call out the fact that we need to get that set up. So once we have our template in place and once we have our contributors um, named, as well as our reviewers and managers, then we can come back into our form section here and we can say we're going to create the form. And so it. In this step here, we're just going to create a new form here in the web interface, and then we're going to submit that. OK, so I'm going to create a form and I'm going to grab that template that we were just looking at when we were editing the, um, the template that was brought in. So this is our pre port checklist. So right here we have the ability to enter in the date of when the form is being completed. If it's a scenario where we're possibly completing the form after maybe a site visit the day before, we can always change the date associated with that form there. And then we can give it a description if we need to as well. OK, um, I can see that this is currently assigned to me. And right now, there's not any other contributors um, on this particular um, form that's going to need to be involved. So I don't I don't have the ability to assign it to another user. If we had multiple contributors um, working in sequence on a form, we would have the ability to then assign the next user to, st to step in and complete their portion of the checklist. OK, also, we had the ability to add references into our form whether it's references to photos that we may have taken on site. It could also be the ability to include an issue uh, that is a result of something that we observed during the completion of our, our checklist or punch list. We also have the ability to reference files from our files section or possibly even other forms that have already been completed. OK, there's no references that I need to add right now, so we're just going to come right over here and we're going to jump right into the completion of the checklist. And as you can see, this particular checklist also has it built in to be able to add photos, issues, or notes to the individual questions as well, not just to the form as a whole. Okay, so the first thing that we would do here is after we've um, you know, added any descriptions, possibly added any references that we needed to, then we just want to come through and we would want to complete the different questions here. So we're just going to say, yes, that is um, compaction is adequate and tested. We're going to say um, the elevation is correct. Um, is the sub base fine graded? We're going to say it's not applicable. Um, and if we needed to, we could possibly even add in a note here if necessary. OK, um, are vo void forms of proper thickness installed? Yes. So again, we would just work down through our list here. Now, if this was a checklist that had multiple people um, that would be contributing to it, then we could complete this. Now, I've, I've entered a non-conforming answer, so I would need to create an issue as a part of that if it's a non-conforming answer. And so it does call that out. And I could just click that issue and create a new issue that would then be referenced back to this form here. For the sake of our, our conversation, our video today, we're not going to worry about that. But we can go through and we can um, complete all of the different sections of the checklist. If this is not my responsibility to complete the other portions of the checklist, I could always come in and just say, I'm ready to submit this form. Now, in this place, in this scenario, it's not going to allow me to submit the form because it's not fully completed. And I've not got this form set up to hand off to another user. So I do have to fully complete the checklist before it's going to allow me to submit. So we're going to roll through here and we're going to go ahead and input our answers for the checklist questions here. And for the sake of time and for our video, we're just going to make sure that these are all conforming. So I'm not forced to create new issues here. OK. So as you can see here, we're just rolling down through here. It's just as simple as a click of the button to get all this stuff entered in. All right. So now we can see that we've got that completed. If we needed to add any additional notes, we could do so here. Obviously, on a checklist like this, we would probably be taking photos, so we would want to add those photos in as reference points. And then once we've done that, we can submit that form. So now that form changes from a draft form in our forms list 
to a submitted form. And to get back to our forms list, I can click forms up there. And right here, we can see the status of our different forms. We can see the name of the form, the date, the form ID number, the status, who it was created by, when it was last updated. Okay, so that is a very quick and very high level overview of the forms area within Autodesk Build. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. And until next time, have a great day.